Hello and welcome to Indie Incursion, an indie games podcast, your weekly source for all the indie games news you need to know. This week we're bringing you just one story, but it's a big one, it's a doozy, it's going to be interesting to get into it. Before we get into any of that though, I want to introduce myself, I am Von Hyde, one of your hosts, alongside the illustrious, the biggest of average Josh Boys. How you doing today, big boy? We're back, baby! Uh, that's all I got for you, that's my hype. Really? Um, I mean, that was a lot of hype there. So I I should congratulate oh, you. That's you. more hype than I currently have. Thank you. It really took it out of me. I don't know. I immediately stopped and I, I just feel flustered now. Whew. Yeah. You're like, uh, oh, podcast is over. It's done. All your energy. I am done. Let's go. Wrap it up, boys. It was wasted. <laughs> That's it. Nah, man, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Another day, another, uh, I guess a dollar. Yeah. I mean, I did go to work before this. In a way, yes, yes. I should say, <laughs> now that we bring up dollars, oh. even though this isn't what like a, segue. A, a great... Yeah, it's not a great segue in any way. Um, I want to do a little housekeeping real quick to talk about something that we are currently involved in. So as of... Dollars? Uh, no, I mean, that. it's kind of part of it. I guess, yeah, right. we... I, I would assume we both have money because uh, we both have jobs, but... I mean, never know. Yeah, I mean that doesn't really equate. You could you could lose all your money right away after. That's uh, that is very true. I do have like twenty different porn subscriptions that kind of come out at the same time, mm. so it basically just sucks everything out of my paycheck. So you went with that highest tier on Subverse. Yeah, yeah, the highest tier on Subverse, the uh, the highest tier on Brazzers. If I'm being honest, Ooh, I don't know many don't... other porn sites that require <laughs> subscriptions. So that's uh, that's basically all I got for that joke. Wow. All right. Well, badumtish. Let's go. <laughs> So, something that we, uh, as the Indian Cushion Podcast, are now involved in is we are part of the HP Podcast Network. That's the Handsome Phantom Podcast Network. It includes several other awesome, uh, just disparate podcasts. Uh, we've got Active Quest, Joseph Yaden's uh, podcast, and the Handsome Phantom Podcast, obviously. And there's a bunch of other awesome podcasts that we're joining with. Um, it's kind of in a way to help us possibly get money and ads for this show. So I will warn you, I'm coming soon in a little while. I don't exactly know when. We will start having ads on the show, but they shouldn't be too egregious. I'm trying to kind of keep it to a minimum because mm-hmm. uh, we can actually choose the amount of ads that we have. So these might be ads for different products uh, like, I don't know, Dollar Shave Clippers, stupid shit. I doubt that, but it, it could be just different products or it could be promos for the different shows within the hp podcast network uh but don't worry you're not going to get that really annoying ad that plays on every single cast box uh podcast that's talking about macaulay culkin's podcast (laughs) i don't give a fuck about macaulay culkin (laughs) damn wow tell us tell us how you really feel he's the true like i don't understand that's that's the truest point uh, that you could that's something that you could point to and be like yes everyone has a podcast Macaulay Culkin has a fucking podcast why I don't know he just wants to talk about like his old movie career and how he now looks emaciated I have no idea but whatever uh, apparently it's called the bunny ears podcast there you go turns out you just did actually get an ad for Macaulay Culkin's podcast oh you fucking jerk yeah what? snuck it in there now, hashtag ad oh fuck my you God, guys we're fucking sellouts now why would you do this <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. We've become monsters. That we have. We joined together with other people, and we just become an amalgam, like that thing at the end of Inside. We just become a blob. Never played it. And then, later on, become a sex doll. Mm. Boom. Mm, uh, That's my goal in life, is to, to become a, be a sex, sex doll. doll. Isn't that like... Yeah. I mean, yeah. you just need to find someone who uses you. It's actually not that hard. I'm pretty That's sure you could point. put a couple of uh, lists on... Uh, or ads on Craigslist. I don't know why I said lists um but yeah i could put a, a couple different lists of my <laughs> of my amazing features on craigslist yeah. to try to get people on me yeah i mean what else I'm do you sadly, need from a sex probably doll probably not as i have yeah, holes I'm, I'm, and you can move me <laughs> i have several orifices and then they won't understand because i'll be like sadly not as well endowed as the biggest of average josh boys and they'll be like what does that what even does that mean, mean? <laughs> my wife will know <laughs> <laughs> Your wife finds me on Craigslist. She's like, holy shit, he actually did it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, we can only hope. But uh, I don't know how to transition from that, so uh, I'll leave it up to you. <laughs> yeah, make sure you guys check out some of these other podcasts. They're great. You will hear promos and all sorts of other stuff. So just 
really not going to affect our lives at all. I just thought I'd say something about it. I'm really excited about it. Uh, I'm a big... I I should also say that we are pretty involved with some of these podcasts. So Active Quest, uh, Joseph Yaden's podcast. Joseph is both a friend of ours and he has previously done work for Parallax Media. Mm -hmm. And Handsome Phantom is the site that I currently write for and am an editor for. So... That's kind of just a peek behind the curtain, take it with a grain of salt, whatever. But I personally listen to both Active Quest and the HP podcast. They're great. Um, I really enjoy them. So, yeah, take that with a grain of salt, however you want. But whatever. Uh, I eat a lot of salt in my daily diet. What do you eat, Josh boy? What What, what have you been eating this week? What have you been doing? What have I been eating this week? Oh, man. Uh, I forgot lunch today because i was pretty busy and by that i mean i was just really lazy last night and i was playing uh video games for way too long um and so there was leftover pizza at the office and i just nommed on that and now i feel like a fatty life is tough Uh, that was basically my problem today as well because a guy um is going back to school so they took that as an excuse to purchase pizza at my uh job so me and two of my friends scarfed down a whole pizza together, and it was pretty fantastic. I mean, I shouldn't say that like and it's an achievement that we ate a pizza, because the two friends of mine, Chase and Avery, can eat a pizza by themselves. They can eat a whole pizza. I've seen them do it. It's kind of disturbing, but, I mean, you well, know. How big are we talking about these pizzas? Because, like, I'm this a... This is a standard large pizza. I mean, I'm like, a pretty a big small pizza. guy, and I can pack quite a lot of pizza. I mean, I can't eat a whole large pizza. I can eat like four slices. This is like twelve slices, depending on how you slice it. You know what I mean? Oh man, well, it's a it's a fucking huge pizza. I don't know. I'm pretty much a uh, bread garbage disposal. You you give me something that's got like bread on it, and for some reason, I will just stuff my face forever. Yeah, bread is kind of that one thing that's just fantastic. Yeah. Like any any form of bread. Well, actually, I, I'm not gonna say that. Not any form of I bread. Mean, you could <laughs> those those Hawaiian sweet rolls can eat my ass. <laughs> They fucking suck. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, yeah, we've got rolls. They're these sweet rolls. You fuck off. Why are you trying to ruin my life right now? I didn't do what's, anything to what's you. What's your problem with sweet rolls? What's, what's so bad I, about I rolls? I like my stuff to either be sweet or salty, not both. Whoa. Oh, man. You pick one. I'm a big salty so you don't fan. Like, you, you don't like uh, like chocolate-covered pretzels or stuff like that? Ah, fuck. You got me. You went immediately to... So I, okay, I can't <laughs> use on, that as a fuck. defense anymore. <laughs> <laughs> don't lie. Like I said, I'm a garbage person. Um, <laughs> I do like sweet and salty stuff. I don't know. It's just the rolls are, like, gross. I'm like, ah, okay. I don't like stuff that I expect to be salty, to mm. be savory. In the end, being sweet. It's like it just lied to me. It lied to me oh. and my taste buds. So what you're telling it's me... It's an offense to me and my family. What you're telling Josh. me is you don't like to eat things that are like you. Big, fat um, liars. That is true. Yeah. I'm also just... I. There's a whole lot of self-loathing on this side of the podcast. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just don't like myself in general. Oh, no. So. Where are we going? I think <laughs> we should probably ring it back a bit. Like, <laughs> it's, uh, a bit much now. <laughs> Is it though? I mean, is it? Maybe you wanted the listeners to get to know you. Is this? That's true. Yeah, I we we're now going to be changing the beginning of the podcast from just talking about what we're playing uh, to what's been happening in our lives in the past week. And apparently, before what we're we eating. get into the news. Yeah, I mean that's something that's been happening, bro. I guess you've so. been eating pizza today. That's true. I ate some pizza too, and wow, yeah, it's like we were meant to host a podcast together eat it, pizza on the same day <laughs> what are the fucking odds you know yeah and you tolerate my excessively annoying comments <laughs> it's it's like we're the dream team dude <laughs> i know it's uh we're meant to be amazing. together it's amazing we get through a whole hour and a half together <laughs> constantly this is episode 42 i'm so well i mean you weren't I here mean, for like two of those podcasts yeah. but i mean that's, that's i'm good surprised enough. you've been here for 40 though yeah see that's that's pretty fantastic. Uh, so this week in my life, I had listened to Kind of Funnies. Uh, we have cool friends. It was with Kieran Gillen. He is a comic book writer. He talked about his comic, Die. I immediately went out and bought it. I hmm. love it. It, it. it was fantastic. If you guys are tabletop role-playing fans, and you'll probably really like it. Either that or just comic fans in general, fantasy fans. It is very, very good. Um, anybody who's read it, 
Chuck is my favorite character. He's kind of just like this douchey dude who very much reminds me of Varric Tethris from Dragon Age uh, 2 and Inquisition. And he is, yeah, he's amazing. I really enjoy it. I'd recommend everyone read it. Mm-hmm. Interesting. All right. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I've kind of decided to get back into <clears throat> comics a little bit, but instead of buying individual issues, I'm only going to buy trades. Hmm. Which is much cheaper. It's much, much cheaper. And it's easier to keep on my shelf. Because then I could just put it on a shelf like a book. What, and I don't have to worry about the rest of it. What do you mean by trades? Like trade-ins? What do you, oh, you... Okay, so you're not familiar with comics or anything? Not, like, uh, not that well. Like, what, what do you mean exactly? Okay, so a, a trade is typically... Uh, they'll put out several issues of a comic. Issues are the specific ones. So mm-hmm. it's like number one, number two, yeah, number yeah, three, yeah. whatever. And they put those out like weekly, monthly. It all just depends on the comic. A trade is a basically it's it's an accumulation of all those in one book so yeah the the trade for die one is issues one through five on one book right okay yeah when i i've never been a comic book uh person per se um the closest i've had to that was i've had a couple of random issues here and there and i used to collect not collect but i used to read a lot of simpsons comics for some reason and i had a bunch of those uh apparently trades which i just didn't know the term of it which was just you know the collections of a bunch of different numbers yeah yeah they're called trades um i'm gonna only buy those because it's cheaper and easier to put on the bookshelf yeah otherwise reading some different manga i also bought the uh destiny comic collection one which is pretty fantastic it's like hardback (laughs) i'm very excited for it yeah and other than that game wise i've been playing kingdom come deliverance a lot Hmm. like a lot yeah, every like waking moment I have that's not working, doing like a podcast, writing, whatever, is playing that video game. It's so much fun. I absolutely love it. Um, the archery is a huge pain in the ass because when you pull out your bow, the reticle disappears. So you have absolutely no idea where your arrow is going to shoot. It's excessive uh but i saw a tip online to put transparent tape on your tv where the reticle would be and color it in with a marker changed my life josh it changed my freaking life (laughs) now my tv has a blue dot on it but i don't even care it's fantastic wow i can now shoot a bow in one video game the length and once i move on from it i'm gonna have gunk on my tv and i'm gonna be pretty pissed but the length good shit will go Yeah, just to shoot a bow in a video game. What what did you play this week? Uh, so I've just been playing a lot more of the same that we talked about last week. So more of the reatomized 60 seconds. I won't go too much more into that because it's pretty much just more of the same. Um, but I've been continuing Youngblood. I think the last time we talked about this last week, I was around like level 9. So like really early. Now I'm about level 27-ish. Um, me and my buddy just keep playing it. And honestly, like... The thing that I'm hearing from a lot of people on the criticisms are usually that like, oh, well, this is Wolfenstein. It's not like the single player game they expect, which I get, or that the storyline of it is kind of meh or the characters are meh. Um, I agree with all those points that if you're looking at this from a single player perspective, this game kind of doesn't hold up because it's definitely not that same, you know, rich storyline aspect since they're honing on more of the like hey work together as a team and it's you know a co-op game there's not going to be a lot of the same uh time that you can really dig into reading all the tapes and looking at you know certain elements to the world because you have another person who's pushing you along through it um which which honestly was one of my biggest gripes with fallout 76 and why i think in games like this don't generally work but from my perspective, I'm not someone who was a huge Wolfenstein fan. I've played some of the older ones like we've talked about, but I'm actually having a lot of fun with it just for the game itself. I really enjoy playing with uh, the buddy that I'm you know, playing co-op with, and it's a pretty good uh, just cooperative shooter game. We're going in, we're basically going up through levels, getting different perks, upgrading our guns, finding new enemies that have like really crazy uh, armor that you have to shoot off so that you can actually, like they basically have weak points, so they're making it so that it's uh, more strategy involved in it. There's different guns have uh, different armor that you pierce basically, so you have to keep constantly changing. 
I went this weird build where I just keep going invisible and throw axes because for some reason when you throw an axe at someone, it basically just like one shots them. It seems crazy OP, but I love it because it just seems really hilarious when I walk invisibly up to three people and just throw an axe in their face over and over again. I'm, I don't know, it, it probably will as I get later on into the stages, like I'm noticing there is a bit of bullet sponginess to it that's starting. Um, but for the time being, you know, I've been playing for a good, I, I want to say six-ish, seven-ish hours, and I'm having a good time with it. So, I mean, it's been pretty worth it, especially since I paid nothing. Um, but, I mean, he paid $40, but he said it was my birthday gift, I guess. So, you know, I'll just, I'll take it. Um, but basically, it's, like I've said before, it's the $30 for the game itself, or you could pay $40 and just always have a invite that you can give to anyone who downloads the trial, the free version, and they can play with you whenever you they want, basically. It's pretty good. Yeah, I've been thinking about picking it up and hopping into it because I'm a big fan of the, the reboot Wolfenstein series. I'm I'm not sure if I'm going to. I've heard that the AI companion, yeah, like playing by yourself, is, is not terrible. too good. Yeah, if I were like I've I've heard a lot of that too. I would probably stray away from that unless you have a buddy to play with. And I know we've talked about you having issues with usually <laughs> playing with people just for competitive side of things, but like it's a really good game because it's not like you there's different difficulties of it obviously and i'm just playing on the normal one right now with my buddy but like even still we're having a good time where the way they've set up the system is when you die you basically bleed out which is kind of like the borderland style of like oh no i fell on the ground for a, a while and basically your buddy can run up to you hold a button for a few seconds and pick you back up and as long as they don't die during that like no one really has any issue and you go back to a certain amount of health and armor based on perks that you have and then you also have uh these uh i believe they're called pep signals where basically it's like a timed cooldown skill and there's a bunch of different ones but the ones that me and my buddy are utilizing is he has the full armor and i have full health so anytime we get really low we just have to basically work with each other to be like all right i'm going to use the full armor like are you low like i am and then go from there or when you pick someone up you immediately use those skills so that you start off from full health full uh, armor basically um so there's a lot of like if you have a person that can play with you it's actually pretty fun and it's not like it's not unforgiving at the lower stages of difficulty. Mm, I, just, I don't know. I really want to jump into it just to see how the story progresses, mm -hmm. especially since I'm a big fan of like BJ, like Terror Billy Blaskowitz. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I've just heard like bad stuff. I think I'm just going to wait for a sale. Like Black Friday will come around and it'll be cheap and I'll just buy it then. Kind of a thing. Yeah. I mean, if you're, yeah, it's, if you don't have someone to play with you, I'd like, I wouldn't recommend this as a single player game. I think it definitely would be lacking in certain areas. It it would just feel a little bit clunky and especially since like both of us have heard the AI seems to be kind of awful. Um but if it is on sale, I I would recommend it. Um it's just I don't know. I'm having fun with it at least, but yeah, you need a good person to play with. I will say it is nice that you finally get a game that's so realistic that approaches damage accurately that an axe just naturally does more damage than a bullet like, it's crazy an axe would just kill somebody but a bullet is just Dude, it's small it's so funny too because i i laugh so hard when i'm playing this game and kill people because you'll walk up to an enemy some of these enemies and you'll shoot them in the face like four times before they die to a shotgun and like for others, it's like even more. But then that same character, half of the time when you throw an ax, even if you just like nick their their leg or their foot with it, they'll just like oh, and just fall down and die. It looks so ridiculous. Yeah, it's just like the tomahawk or throwing knife in Call of Duty games that kills you one shot and you're like, what? Mm -hmm. How? Yeah. Like in what world? I understand that you probably just cut my penis off, but I don't think I just commit, like, I don't think I just offed myself after that happened. So I think I'm still alive. Nah, man. Once you hit their Achille uh, Achilles heel, they're just, whoop, there's nothing else to live for, and they're just gone. That's a good point. You're just basically dead. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, foolproof. Uh, speaking of foolproof, I want to hop in to our one 
solitary story. <laughs> this is, but it's it's a big, it's a meaty I mean, one. I mean, we also have news cram stories. It's just this is the 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 big one to talk about. Yeah, this is a very big one that I want to get deep into because I don't want to shit on shit on uh, Koji Igarashi. So you know, <laughs> uh, so this is over on Game Informer. It's written by Imram Khan and it is Ooblitz developer deals with harassment over Epic Game Store exclusivity. This is a longer story. It's it's pretty wordy. There's a decent amount of stuff into it, and I'm also going to hop in to Ooblitz's actual blog post about this. Ooh. So just get ready for some stuff. I will tell you right now, <clears throat> once we get into the uh, Glumberland, which is the game, uh, the Ooblitz's actual developer, once we get into their kind of response to everything, there is some harsh language, but I'm obviously going to avoid a decent amount of it because oh, you're, they say you're not going to say the no no words yeah no i'm not going to say the n word and other der- like really derogatory words i'm not i'm not going to say those i mean but uh yeah let's get into this coward. article i guess <laughs> <laughs> right i need to be controversial uh, <laughs> So last week, the developers at the two-person studio, Glumberland, announced that they would be bringing their upcoming adventure game, Ooblitz, to the Epic Game Store rather than Steam on PC for a period of temporary exclusivity, which just makes it so much fucking worse that it's temporary. Yeah. That's just, I mean, people well, are just bitches. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it does and it doesn't, because there's like some people who, you know, would probably wait for a game anyway, and they're just like, well, I'll get it on discount. So it's kind of the same thing. But then again, I don't know if it would realistically go dis- discount for the immediate launch of Steam. But anyway, regardless, yeah. I'm sure some people will would have waited anyway. Yeah, plus I imagine the people who are angry about this probably weren't going to buy the game. But uh, So I mean, while... <laughs> Yeah. While a Steam listing has been up for some time, the game has not actually been purchasable and is coming to the Xbox One still. This small game that never really garnered much attention has become the flashpoint of a larger culture war over development decisions, Epic Game Store, and the uh, va- validity, because apparently I can't read, uh, mm-hmm. validity of consumer anger and entitlement. Gamers love when you call them entitled, Big Josh boy. It's They're true. big fans. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's. I mean, if there's one thing I'd classify myself as, it's clearly entitled. So, I I love that that's a serious trigger word for gamers. Like you just hear the word entitlement, and they're like, dude, my freaking my hand is like seconds away from punching you right in your dick. You better <laughs> better shut your mouth. <laughs> It's kind of interesting. It's funny it's pretty- that it's it's funny that a lot of this, especially from like a PC side, people get really pissed off when uh, they're called entitled. But the whole big joke that PC users go about is calling themselves the PC master race. Yeah, and so like, they kind of feed into it. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> mm, I don't know what you really want. And granted, I am part of the, the joking PC Master Race, but I also wouldn't care if you called me entitled. Yeah, and you also just called yourself entitled, so... I mean, boom. <sighs> there it. you go. What am I going to... I'm a... You know, I'm one of them. <laughs> On Thursdays, the on Thursday, the developers at Glumberland, <laughs> a Thursdays. husband and wife team, <laughs> made up of Rebecca uh, accordingly, maybe, and Ben Wasser. I'm not 100 percent sure. Probably just said those wrong. That's okay. Uh, put up a blog post announcing the Epic Game Store exclusivity, knowing that exclusivity deals, especially to the Epic Game Store, tend to anger gamers. Uh, it tend to anger PC gamers. For oftentimes a variety of reasons, Glumberland hoped to kill the controversy with kindness ahead of time. They pair, uh, they pair, put up the, I'm pretty sure it's just supposed to be the pair, Probably. not they. The pair put up a blog post explaining their reasoning, citing that the money Epic was offering for exclusivity could help them make the game without stress and hire one more, what? One more people? Oh, uh, on more people. Mm. Nope, that was me. Uh, hire all more people to help out their beleaguered contracted programmer. Uh, the post was tongue-in-cheek and appeared to try to speak to people upset about Epic Game Store, but willing to engage the argument in good faith. Uh, a seemingly miscalculation in, res- in retrospect. Um, in one Reddit post... 
A user called the explanation condescending and disgusting, explaining that they felt insulted as consumers. This is about more than just downloading another launcher. Another post read referring to uh, the part of the developer update that suggested Glumberlin had full faith in their base to download the Epic Game Store client. The line was uh, Exhibit A in stoking fans' anger over what was determined to be a glib and dismissive attitude from the developers. Um... What ensued was a massive wave of hate and harassment over the decision to become exclusive to the Epic Game Store and what uh, harassers were labeling as commensurate reaction to the developer's attitude. The game's Discord channel uh, became flooded with people questioning the developers, um, screen capping their responses, sending them death threats, and even editing and wholesale creating faked images. At one point, Wasser took to Twitter to explain that despite a screenshot circulating around, uh, he did not say that gamers should go to gas chambers. A video was created to back that (laughs) screenshot up which itself was also false. The response to the tweet informed Wasser that they uh, either did not believe his claims, oh my god, this is so stupid, uh, or that the screenshot were believable because of his attitude and thus will still ultimately... uh, Thus, we're still ultimately his fault. It seems unlikely that most of these responses were from people eagerly anticipating the game. The developers, uh, Patreon had 1,100 patrons, while the Steam discussion board, yeah, Steam discussion boards uh, before the August exclusivity announcement had 72 topics from where. Uh, from when it launched in June 2017. Earlier today, Wasser released a Medium post explaining that he and Cordingly were going through, uh, going through over the last weekend since the announcement just a general content warning wasser's posts have some examples of harassment uh they have been receiving and much of it is not family safe as it includes death threats racism anti-semitism and more in the post he explains that he understands frustrations with the epic deal uh he does not understand the anger over it and why it is escalating to the uh to this level epic themselves have come out in in support of Glumberland and are standing by the developers, commending all, uh, condemning, not commending. That would be bad. They did not do that. Uh, con- <laughs> oh, much different story. <laughs> condemning all the harassment over not just Ooplets, but over the general tone whenever a game becomes exclusive to the store. The announcement of Ooblitz highlighted a disturbing trend, which is growing and uh, undermining healthy public discourse. And that's the coordinated and deliberate creation of promo- and promotion of false information, including fake screenshots, videos, and uh, technical analysis, uh, accompanied by harassment of partners, promotion of hatred, the hateful themes, and intimidation of those with opposing views, Epic said in a statement released on their website. Uh, they reached out for Glumberland for comment, and it doesn't really seem like they got it back. I don't think so. Uh, now they've got their take. I'm not going to hop into that because that's kind of what a podcast is about. <laughs> I, instead, I want to hop into and kind of go over some of the fucked up shit Dude, that people have said I didn't, to these guys. I didn't look at this this part of this until just now while you were going through all that. And man, it is nuts. It is pretty bad. Um yeah. It's good luck. It's a little excessive. <laughs> I I'm gonna say some of them are like they're kind of hilarious. Not because they're like these guys deserve it because they absolutely do not nobody deserves to be treated like this it's kind of hilarious because one of them obviously does not understand uh he said i heard y'all n-words took 10 cents pesos after stating that you wouldn't is it true that you i'm not gonna read that one did a derogatory term for jews yeah, yeah, it's just a whole lot of stuff. Um, so first, Tencent is, and I don't understand this, why he said pesos. Tencent is a Chinese company, and pesos are a Mexican currency. 
So I, I, I don't I'm not really understanding the idea behind that. I even went, see, this is my issue. I even went so far to try to find the ethnicity of the Ooblets developers to see if one of them was Hispanic to see if pesos made sense. It doesn't. No. I went way too deep. I went way too deep on that one. I, don't I should know. not have gone down that rabbit hole. Um, one of my favorite ones is the fact... <laughs> You ignorant piece of shit. I hope you get knocked out and pissed on. <laughs> <laughs> That's so stupid. What's wrong with people? <laughs> that one was pretty. That one was pretty. It's bad, but it's kind of hilarious. I mean, at least. Yeah, at least that one wasn't like. Man, all of these are so crazy. Like, just racist, racist or just. Uh, man, they're so bad. I, like, it's just atrocious. Why? This is the thing that that is insane to me. Like, there's so many people. Like, you know, there's so many. All of these people knew nothing about Ooblets. Yeah, yeah. I also kind of wonder, like, these people are coming out, like, attacking um, Glumberlin. And, uh, see, I don't necessarily <laughs> understand attacking somebody like, uh, this is also kind of going to tie in and, to the ESA's accidentally like doxing in a way um, mm -hmm. thousands of different games journalists I don't understand hitting somebody up and saying the most horrendous shit that could then, then be I mean even in like I don't understand it from a morality standpoint because it's super fucked up but I also don't understand it from a self preservation standpoint because somebody is going to find this and use it against <laughs> you one day and either that or Dude, it, like, people, like, uh, the, when they email, like, if they were to email Glumberland or they were to, uh, like, email a games journalist or anything, they're in a way doxing themselves. Mm -hmm. They're just like, oh, yeah, you, you can find out who I am. And it's like, dude, what the, f how are you this dumb? How are you this dumb just in general? How are you this hateful? People, I don't understand. People have this whole mentality of once you're in front of a computer, it's basically being behind a brick wall. None of these people, I, I can like guarantee there's a 99% fact like that no, not one of these people would say anything remotely as vulgar as they did in these comments if this was, you know, them in front of them. Like the guy who's like, you, I better not see you on the streets. You're going to have a face smashed. Like for what? Yeah, like, who cares? <laughs> like, cut, like you're gonna have your smay smashed in as a wake up call, Mister Entitled. <laughs> like, wh why? 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 How? Okay, even if you are like, this is the thing. Even if you are upset, and granted, like, okay, I'm gonna go on the side of what they posted initially was a bit much. Now I know they were trying to use it as kind of a a joking manner and to make it like oh it's not a big deal, but obviously there are people who are upset about this whole Epic Game Store thing. Obviously there all are people who are still a bit salty on the subject. Obviously, as you can see by these comments, but like <laughs> even if obviously yeah, even if. Like, I don't agree with him, and I don't think the way they did it was the right way. There's no way that the next day I'm going to be like, you know what? I'm so pissed. I'm going to I'm gonna fucking punch you in the face when I see you. I don't know who the hell you are. I've never heard about your game. But, ugh, don't you dare associate me with a group of people that someone calls entitled. Like, who cares? Like, grow up, people. Enough. Yeah, and something I also don't really understand is, like, people are... So this this whole thing about video games making you violent, it's mm. coming up in the news again for really stupid ass reasons, mm. but it's coming up again and like, I, I don't know, I feel like these are the people that will be used as examples. I mean, They're like, oh yeah, it's obviously a toxic culture. And it's like, it's not. These guys are just fucking assholes. Yeah. Like, I mean, the problem. They're definitely in the minority. The problem is it's really easy to signal out when something goes wrong as opposed to when something goes right. It's it's easy yeah. to point out that yes, these guys are assholes, but it's also, you know, harder to say, well, there's also thousands of people who aren't saying fucked up stuff. So like how do you really quantify that in like you know, there's millions of people on this earth. There's there's tons, tons and tons. And obviously some won't even know anything about this. Well, actually a lot won't know anything about this, but some will get really pissed off and some won't, but they're the ones who are screaming the loudest. So they're going to be the ones who are in the spotlight right now. Cause they're saying such, you know, 
cr- crazy comments that just are not acceptable. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't, another thing I I truly just don't understand, and I'm assuming it's because I'm a somewhat well-adjusted person, is the, (laughs) like, the, uh, notice I said somewhat, I'm not saying I'm I'm all there. Um, A little bit. (laughs) One day. Um, I don't understand the complete lack of empathy for people, like, they, they say the most horrendous shit, and it's like, not only if somebody, like, said this to you, you would probably feel just just terrible you would feel absolutely terrible let alone if this actually happened to you so i i truly can never understand somebody saying this fucked up shit to another person like i i don't get it and also like i i don't get how people i don't know there's there's just things out there that i'm like how does this exist in modern society like how how have we somehow degraded to like barbarians while also using it as like a shield to say we've somehow socially evolved we're like oh yeah we're, we're obviously like so much more than apes because we now like fucking yell at people on the internet over video games <laughs> now you're not you're just you're the exact same thing you just have a different medium like i don't i don't get it yeah yeah i don't and i don't understand (laughs) like some of these some of these insults like especially the very vulgar ones are like they make no sense they make no sense they're just putting offensive words together there's literally one of these comments that is just two offensive words next to each other that make no sense in the context of who these developers are yeah i i mean there are a lot of them that i'm just like what like, ah, uh, I, I don't get it at all. I, I don't, I can't say that I know the developers intimately. Um, I, I can't say I know them. I'm not going to say that uh, I understood the tone of the initial post because I also thought it came across a little douchey. Yeah. Um, apparently that's how he speaks like that that's kind of right. like the that's the attitude around ooblets and its community and it's like okay that's cool so i do <clears> think <throat> it was a misstep to kind of address the greater like the the larger gaming community mm-hmm. with the exact mm-hmm. same well i guess that's also me kind of in a way being a hypocrite because i, mean, yeah, I myself like that's tough because you want to be true to your name like, uh, like yeah no matter what this is showing is like that he as you know the developer of ooblets and of his fan base like he's still being what they always set out to be which is themselves which is talking to their community not from as he mentions from a press release standpoint but more as a conversation piece i think it is obviously very tough because like both me and you we saw this as kind of a douchey post and not like the best way to go about it but at the same time you kind of have to respect it in the way that he's saying like oh this is you know me being me and that's just how it's going to be unfortunately that springs you know people like this that are going to be angry um and it really sucks because like i think yeah it's not the best post it was definitely something where i heard about it and i was like well that's kind of a terrible way to go about it but like it's a shame that he and his wife now have to get basically death threats because you know they wanted to be financially stable <laughs> like oh yeah what terrible people not, they must be yeah not just death threats but also like <clears throat> rape threats yeah and all sorts of they they have to endure this like constant bombardment of harassment it's like what's wrong with you people why why do you need to do this are you so angry with your life outside of this that you need to like be just so absolutely rude to these people who are just making kind of this innocent game about fucking farming and then dance battles like Mm -hmm. and if anything these dumbasses just made this game more popular there's gonna be so many people who buy this game just because of this yeah i really do hope this sparks like (laughs) here's the thing i still have no interest in this game i never have and it's just not my style but like there's still you know that part of me that's like maybe i should just buy this to support them to be like hey i still want this to do well because fuck like no one deserves that treatment (laughs) yeah absolutely nobody does and like even if you're not gonna contribute to like you're not gonna buy the game or you're you're not gonna donate to their patreon or whatever it, just the fact that this is so fucked up that these people did something so terrible that then 
literally like every gaming podcast I listen to has spoken about this game that like Game Informer says was basically unknown Mm -hmm. before this which I mean it wasn't like I guess I have an indie games podcast so I knew about it but still um like this game was basically unknown and is now on essentially the digital front page of every single news organization right like you guys did the exact opposite of what you wanted to do and i i I have no idea i mean i i guess actually they didn't because what they wanted to do was just be gigantic dickheads i mean they uh, kind of accomplished that (laughs) yeah yeah they can all just go suck a bag of dicks i don't really care like i'm kind of i'm done with this whole thing (laughs) I know that man the poor that poor couple like what a fucking like I can't even imagine like to have such a enormous amount of like even okay even in like a positive standpoint having that many people like knowing you and communicating to you and uh, you know being around you is pretty overwhelming but having it to be all just (laughs) constant negativity is like man that's got to shatter you like yeah there was a there's one part where i guess his wife said uh i have been crying nonstop for the past two days and feeling like the world was collapsing <clears> around <throat> me mm-hmm. that's from what i understand a quote from her and then somebody responded to her oh really how about you kill yourself instead it would be funny if you and the other shit lord got terminally ill i mean actually he just says terminal ill yeah, these guys are intelligent. Uh, and saw each other slowly fading away. What the fuck is wrong with you? Oh my god. That's like a whole new low for humanity. Like seeing this kind of stuff. This is this is the this is like the the faith in humanity like destroyed. He's just like, "Ah yeah, they're fucking shitheads, cool." I I hope their game comes out and is fucking tremendous. I hope that it does so well. It's the next fucking Cuphead. Honestly, the only <laughs> thing I'm angry about when it comes to exclusivity in this game, it's not on Nintendo Switch or PlayStation. Yeah, I'm not gonna send them fucking death threats because I don't give a shit. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. It's fucking strange. Yeah. Oh man, it's... what a what a story. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of uh, getting just crammed full of negative information, it's time to pop into something that uh, is not that bad or terrible at all. Cram, <laughs> cram, cram, cram. I we definitely should have put like a buffer story to just kind of like go, make it a little bit lighter. Oh, I just, I just Maybe we should have shit on Koji Garashi a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I just I fucking love what a transition, man. <laughs> I, you cease to amaze me with your transitions. There's something about yeah, it. You you have a gift of t- terrible transitions. <laughs> <laughs> They're like a glorious explosion. They're like a to use a kind of funny reference, just a dumpster truck on fire. Yeah. Like it's just. It is bad, but they're a spectacle. Yeah, man. It's a <laughs> it's a, a curse, but a gift at the same time. You know what I'm saying? That's true. They are something to behold. Uh, this time, I did separate the news cram into based on uh, into different segments based on who actually like published the article. Hot so it'll be a little bit easier. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be a little a little bit nicer. Uh, our first three stories are from IGN. Uh, first of which is decay of logos or logos. I'm not 100 percent sure. It looks like it looks logos. Like logos. 100. But yeah, it is yeah. a weird title. I didn't. I don't know if it should have been logos, but maybe it's logos. I don't know, dude. It's got sexy elf chicks in it. I'm here, dude. Yeah, people are really like anti about it because it's so much of a like a ripoff of Zelda. But I don't know, like it kind of looks like it, but it also looks just not at the same time. Like I don't know. I'm a firm believer that original ideas no longer exist in the world, so I don't really give a shit if things are ripoffs. It's like, okay, cool. It's going to get recycled in a day anyway. What's the point of being mad about it? Yeah. Like, I I don't get it. Uh, but this is Decay of Logos, the very, the very <laughs> Zelda Breath of the Wild the game gets a release date and new trailer. Uh, then we've got IGN Game of the Year winner Journey has surprise released on iOS and No Man's Sky Beyond uh, update releases or release date announced. It's coming sometime in uh, August, I believe on the 18th, but I'm not 100% sure. Didn't they? they did not announce anything else, I don't believe. I thought... 
Like well, no, because they wasn't in the article. There was something about the fact that there's VR and like crossplay or something. Well, they they had announced VR initially, initially. and they announced that it's it's like going to be a full MMO. Mm-hmm. We had followed this story a couple times, yeah. and then I said uh, as one of my E3 predictions that they were going to come out and say that there's going to be full crossplay. I mean between consoles that it's on meaning pc xbox one and playstation but i don't know if they actually confirmed that at all um the, so vr uh, support yeah the, uh, yeah, the no. article made it seem kind of like they did it um says... two of the most notable additions to beyond bringing vr support and no man's sky online the latter of those two as you might have guessed focuses on expanding no man's sky's multiplayer components with hello games saying it includes a radical new social and multiplayer experience which empowers players everywhere in the universe to meet and play together um so they haven't that sounds like crossplay to me i don't know yeah it sounds somewhat similar but they have yet to say crossplay so mm, I'm I'm not gonna yes. say it's crossplay yet, but I still think it's gonna have crossplay. I I definitely think it'll happen, but yeah, th- I guess that might just be me. Maybe, uh, then we're going over to maybe they'll just be like it's for mobile, so now you can play it anywhere you want. That'd be fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to see. They have like a shitty version yeah, on, mobile. on mobile. They're just like, eh, <laughs> eh. Yeah. <laughs> we know how much people like mobile. I would hate that so much. Uh, and then we're going over to Polygon. We got Slay the Spire and Squad offered in September's Humble Bundle. Uh, now we're over on Game Informer for the next two articles. Uh, Far Lone Dales coming to Switch this month. And River City Girls gets new trailer for the hot-headed Misako. Maybe. Not 100% sure, but yeah, I think I got it right. right. I don't know how else it would be pronounced. <laughs> then let's go with Misako. Uh, now we're going over to Twinfinite. The soundtrack for Celeste Farewell DLC is now up for pre-order. Man, I really can't wait for the game to be I'm up for pre-order, but no big deal. <laughs> yeah, but those sweet, sweet tunes. Yeah, dude. I'm, I'm, I'll I'm. i be the first to admit that Celeste has an amazing soundtrack, but uh, I have yet to see my physical release. That's so true. I mean, he has, whatever. he has been pretty busy. He's making a lot of those uh, Mario, Mario Maker, Maker levels. fucking levels. <laughs> Yeah. God damn it. They're tough. <laughs> Matt Thornson, just makes your damn game. Please, quit making it in other games. Just make your game so I can have my game. Just get Mario Maker <laughs> 2. It's basically Celeste DLC. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, then we've got the next free Epic Game Store title is uh, I have no KO idea. underscore OP Modes Gnog, maybe. Yeah, I've, I've never heard of this, and boy, is that a title. I've heard of the game before, but I've uh, the game is Gnog, but I don't know how to pronounce that, and I also have never played it. So, all right then. Mm-hmm. Uh, and last story on Twinfinite is Devolver's uh, physics-based co-op Heave Ho comes comes out later this month. Actually, looks pretty uh, good. Um, it looks weird. It looks. I've only seen like a little bit of yeah, it. Yes, I was watching the like the they had like a promotional trailer where they had people just sitting around like screaming at some convention it looked like and they were trying to play the game it looks pretty uh annoying in a fun way i guess where it's like you're set to lose you basically you're playing as like the barrel of monkeys uh old school toy i don't know if you remember those because i feel like those are like uh, no, I know what it is. Okay. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I, like I also know a Rock'em Sock'em Robots oh, arm, just to so let you cool. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Big fan, actually. I know. Do you remember Sock'em Boppers? Uh, no. You don't remember huh. Sock'em Boppers? Is that the, like, big inflatable fist that you yeah. used to knock your fucking sock-em friends out with? Boppers, Sock'em Boppers, More fun you know than what's a pillow super... fight. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what's super fucked up about those is? Then there's, like, Hulk hands, which were just fucking hard as shit know, styrofoam. Yeah, with like a pole in the middle. So it's like, hey, do you want it to hurt even more when I punch you in the face? Sweet. I've got a bigger hand that is literally the size of your fucking head. Yeah. That's basically what a whole game They didn't play was. test that very well. But anyway, so the point is uh, the game is essentially uh, characters that are hanging on to each other, kind of like a barrel of monkeys did where they each latch on and you have to swing uh your characters all connected to each other over to some different platform with obstacles in the way it looks really difficult but fun as one of those like party mode kind of games um but 
I don't know. It's one of those things where like you have to have a big group and I feel like it'll be one of those I buy it once, we try it and then never play it again. <laughs> so if I'm being honest, that whole time you were talking, I was thinking about how weird it was that you remembered the whole theme song to Sock Em Boppers. How could you not? It's so catchy. <laughs> <laughs> more fun than a pillow fight <laughs> yeah man it's good it's good i used to but i don't even think i ever had those but i always was like i want one and i never got it so maybe it's just me as a kid pining for that and so i just always remember the song i was always kind of afraid of them because i was afraid that it would like deflate a little bit and then eventually you try to go punch somebody and you just actually fucking deck them <laughs> you just you lay them out <laughs> i mean <laughs> Those are some interesting fears to have as a kid. Mm, it, does it is it surprising? I guess, though, I guess. Not. Come on, we've we've already uh, look. We've already talked about how well adjusted I am as an adult. I mean, so. it's more fun than a pillow fight. So that's true. I've heard that somewhere. I don't know where. Yeah. Uh, the last of our. <laughs> the last of our articles in News Cram are all from Nintendo Life. Oof. We've got heavy metal platformer Valfaris, maybe, uh, is getting a physical Switch release this November. Then we've got Noir Switch game Liberated has you playing through a moving comic book. Uh, mm. Both Guacamole games launch on Switch in physical form today, which was several days ago, like two days ago specifically, I think. <laughs> um, then we've got indie publisher uh Play Digis maybe uh, announces four games for the Nintendo Switch. Oh, you skipped one. Looking, did we? Yeah, you skipped the call. Oh shit, I did. That's the one I wanted <laughs> to yell about. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you wanted to talk about it, so I just skipped it. Uh, we've got co-op shooting slash dungeon crawler Riverbond announced for Switch. Yo, this game actually looks pretty legit. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it's I, I'm I'm not a big fan of the whole like Minecrafty look. It's it just never clicks with me. I don't really care for Minecraft at all. But it it looks like a lot of fun from a co-op like multiplayer perspective. And you get like all the really cool indie characters in there. Like you could play as the people from Enter the Gungeon. You could play as you could play as Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight. You could play as uh, the character from Bastion. Like there's uh, there's just a ton of cool like indie characters. Which um, I actually wanted to put like a side note on that. Do you think that hurts a game more than it? does well for the game like in longevity's terms because i was like not having a notable protagonist yeah because or... i was thinking about that the other day when i looked at this article i was like oh this game is so cool like it would be awesome but like once you're done with the game like you know people are gonna gravitate towards those different indie characters and then when they're done they're gonna associate it with that game and it's like for the developer, it's it works for that first game they came out with, but then the second game is like they have to obviously work just as hard or then try to get more licenses from other indie developers for their fam famous characters. So like, it's kind of a weird catch-22. I don't know. I just yeah, thought it was interesting. I, I definitely see what you're saying. Like, uh, And this is going to be kind of weird because Nintendo fans know, but I guess the developers of Riverbond fans will know. Um, but like... Super Smash Bros. I've always thought it was kind of weird um, that I'm fairly certain like 90% of people don't know what those characters are from. I, mm -hmm. including myself, I have no idea what the majority of those characters are from, <sighs> even though most of them are from Fire Emblem. So. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. When I first when I first played um, the oh, what was it the the melee? I think was the second one, the one where they first showed up on GameCube. Yeah, on GameCube, when they first showed up, I I had no idea. I was like, why, why are these humans here? Yeah, like I, well, I mean, Mario's a human. I mean, yeah, but he's he's not like human, human. You know, those are like anime. Yeah, he's a little piece of shit. Whoa, boy. <laughs> but I guess I was just like, what? Who is this like blue-haired Link? <laughs> like, that is a fair question. Who is Blue Haired Link? The world will never know. I mean, because people only know him from Smash, and they call him Blue Haired Link. Japan knows. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Nintendo fans know. Uh, so you wanted to say something else about Riverbond, did you not? Did I? Oh, I did. Yeah. Well, uh, Riverbond looks super cool. Looks super awesome with all of the crazy amount of fun that you could have from a multiplayer perspective. Why are they not allowing this to be online? I hate how it's only couch co-op and I know, like I reached out to them the day it was announced on, um, God, I can't remember where it was. I think it 
was it the kind of funny showcase from E3? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, er, not not the one from E3. I believe it was the one before one? the okay. first. Yeah. Yeah, it was one of those. I'm pretty sure. But anyway, I immediately reached out on Twitter and I was like, "Hey, uh, you didn't specify. Is it only couch co-op? Like, do you have any plans for online?" And they're like, "No plans." And I was like, "Damn." And that's pretty much the only reason why I won't buy this is because like, what's what's the point if I can't play with my friends who aren't, you know, here. Uh, I'm an adult, damn fuck. it. I don't have time for people to come over to my house. Yeah, it was either announced in the first Kind of Funny Game Showcase, a Nintendo Direct, or the first uh, like PlayStation um, mm, State of Play, yeah, but I'm not maybe. 100% sure. I feel like it was a Nintendo Direct now that I think about it, but was I'm it? not a million percent sure. I don't think so, because wasn't this originally like for other systems, and now it's just announced that it's coming to Switch? Mm, yeah yeah announced for switch that's a good point so yeah i think it was either state of play or the um kind of funny game showcase first i'm not 100 percent sure though i mean regardless it's the same thing as the the issue that they're not allowing online multiplayer yeah that is kind of weird especially in today's day and age it's like i a lot of people play online like couch co-op i mean you specifically have to go this is especially weird because it's hard to find games with couch co-op now Mm -hmm. versus online like online is the default Mm -hmm. and then couch co-op is an added benefit where they're the exact opposite yeah i mean it's kind of weird but i get it there's obviously a lot more infrastructure that goes into setting up you know multiplayer servers and whatnot so it's definitely an added deficit to their time to really work on the game itself but uh just put it in damn it (laughs) uh the next news article is look after your mental health in shadows 2 uh perfidia i think uh survival horror headed to switch Mm -hmm. and then we've got lethal league blaze on switch receiving an optimization patch to improve performance uh candace of hyrule updated or updated to version 1.0.2 adds achievements and beat rumble option uh bloodstained <laughs> bloodstained receives a small patch as koji igarashi apologizes for continued inconvenience and the last of the news cram articles is whipsy the lost atlas has some strong kirby vibes and is coming to switch this month uh so big josh boy we've been blessed with so many amazing indie games news stories today that i think it's about time we give back to the creators in our next segment god bless the crowd this is where the biggest of average josh boys goes into all sorts of different crowd funding sites find some awesome indie games we talk about them today we have two to talk about we've got kumo an atmospheric tale of hope and simple sandwich you play as a slice of bread in a cute couch co couch cooperative game to play with your friends or enemies let's hop on kumo before we get to the dumpster fire that is simple sandwich hey man (laughs) simple sandwich it's well all right kumo first (laughs) We'll, we'll get there so kumo is currently looking for sixteen thousand three hundred and fifty four dollars that is their goal they have 23 days left to go and currently have ten thousand three hundred and sixty three dollars already earned uh it looks like the to get a copy of the game you have to do sixteen dollars that extra dollar though yeah yeah that's it's a little spicy i don't know if i'm cool with not being six or not being 15 Mm dollars 16 i'm also not super cool with the fact that okay so i'm gonna complain about the video again so there's a section where like okay there's gameplay and then he shows up and talks and i'm like all right then there's gameplay and then he shows up and talks again but the lip syncing is off so he's like his words do not match his mouth and i was like that's weird and then it goes to gameplay and then it goes to him again and it's fine and i was like what is happening why is there just that one part that is (laughs) off i don't get it (laughs) all right well uh just scroll down a little bit and play the video that's all of those parts taken out and is only gameplay (laughs) (laughs) oh that's nice i mean (laughs) Maybe he should have put that there, but whatever, dude. Yeah. 
It is nice that he actually explained it a little bit that this is actually like a, he's a solo developer, which I I really appreciate. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Hopefully he doesn't make like one bad mistake and then everybody like fucks with I him. Hope it doesn't go that to the Epic suck. Store. Yeah, I really hope it's not Epic Store exclusive. Um, it does say you can wish list it on Steam. So I mean, that hasn't stopped developers from before from jumping ship, you know. That's a good place. Ooblets did have a Steam uh, Steam page. So. Well, technically that one still makes sense because, I mean, it's just delayed. But I mean, I should say the best uh, example is Metro Exodus. You could purchase the game up, like, into, like, I think it was less than a month before release, and then they closed off PC. Mm-hmm. And they were like, hey, the people who purchased it, we're going to give you those copies through Steam, but the rest of you have to go through Epic. <laughs> Which is kind of crazy. I mean, I know we're going on a weird tangent, but like, what? When a, do we not? I mean, yeah, that's true too. <laughs> but like, what a weird thing to say to just be like, well, these others can have it. You can't though. You didn't get here quick enough. <laughs> like, so weird. It's like that commercial with the old man, and he has like a dollar on the end of his fishy pole, and he's like, oh, gotta be quicker than that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, something like that. I think about that commercial quite often. Wow. <laughs> uh, an interesting kid. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about Kumo. <laughs> Kumo is an atmospheric puzzle exploration game centered around a young 10 year old boy named Kumo who is lost in limbo, finding his way forward, holding on to hope that he may return to his world. This actually doesn't look bad. It looks really good, especially for a solo developer. Yeah. You know what it reminds me of is that one... We talked about it on Kickstarter back when we were first starting. It was like... I think it was kind of similar name. Maybe I'm way off, though. But it was like you riding on some light pole or something. I don't remember. I know you were really excited oh, about Oh, Omno. That. Omno. See, it's the same. It's like the one one word. Yeah, with the Kumo o. versus Omno. Yeah, yeah, very similar. It reminds me a lot of that in its artistic style. Um, and I have kind of the same issue with it is that, and granted, obviously this is a, you know, solo dev. And also this is at its first stage because that's why they're trying to ask for money now to put more into it but like it i should add that <clears throat> omno was also a solo dev yeah see there you go just a random aside there's a freakish amount of similarities between these i two. know it's interesting uh no uh light uh hovering abilities though from what i can tell uh yeah and you can't surf on your freaking staff what are you doing kumo I guess. get your head out of your dick <laughs> jeez wow <laughs> Dickhead is a serious problem. <laughs> um, and also just sounds like I'm insulting someone. Anyway, yep. so... <laughs> but the game... So this is my same thing with the, the other game, was it feels like too open without enough interesting stuff to really look at. It, it just seems very... I don't, I don't want to use a word that's highly negative, but it just seems too open without enough detail, I guess. Yeah, it seems a little barren. <laughs> yeah. But I guess that sounds mean. That has that's, a negative that's connotation. What I, yeah, I'm trying not to sound mean with it because I know this is, once again, you have to keep in mind with Kickstarters that this is at an earlier stage. You know, this is very early on. This is a solo dev. It's him trying to get money to create more assets, to create, you know, new environments and whatnot. And obviously what they're showing now is going to change once the final product comes out but still it is my concern of seeing this seeing a solo dev and being like well how much is this going to change in um you know when they're essentially saying it will be out which the estimated delivery is january 2020 i think that's not specifically going to be the release date though because that seems way too close yeah, I doubt it. <laughs> um, but regardless, it's you know it's one of those things where, and this is with any Kickstarter, you have to trust that this is going to be a really good story since this is more about you know his journey through Limbo, which it could very well be a very interesting story, and I think the mechanics of the world could be interesting based on you know there's not a whole lot here it's very open but that makes it where any mechanic could come in and totally change the game to something unique um but at its 
core of what I'm seeing right now, um, I don't think this would be a game for me. I just don't like a lot of these open-ended exploration type games. Um, it just, it, it feels like, and obviously this might change, but it feels like there wouldn't be enough to really grasp my interest to continue through. Yeah, I'm trying to think of uh, Tequila Works recently. Put, oh, Rhyme. Okay. Rhyme mm, is also mm -hmm. a game that this came to mind where it's yeah. kind of like it's an open puzzle platformer in a way. Um, I also wonder how, like, I, I don't know if this is a really normal thing because we've talked about this part before, but when it shows the revenue split, is it normal for them to have like a large percentage of the money going toward the rewards that they promise within the Kickstarter? So, I mean, he doesn't have like a large percentage per se because he only has 20% of it, but uh, I can't be the only one who thinks that's a little bit weird. Well, it's a little interesting because if you're thinking about 20%, and it's 16,000 of their goal. So they're essentially saying that 3,200 of that is going to go away and go into just random rewards. It's kind of a high number in comparison to how much you're getting. Yeah, especially, I mean, I don't know. It, does that happen often? Like, we've talked about this a bunch of times, but I'm going to be honest, my memory is kind of dick. Mm. Uh is that something that shows up quite often where they're just like, oh, yeah, a large portion? It's not usually 20%. I, I see it generally in like the anywhere from 5 to 15 is kind of where it goes. But I also think that, um, and this being a solo dev, you have someone who probably doesn't have, you know, the best mindset on every aspect of what's going to happen with the Kickstarter. Um, so it could have just been that he saw that as, you know, like, like this is a thing where you're essentially mapping this out as what you are planning, but what you're planning could be totally off, could be, you know, something that's really wrong. Those rewards could even be more expensive out of the budget than he anticipates. It might be less. It's kind of hard to gauge these these graphics are good from you know a visual perspective of just getting a first glance but obviously that could be totally wrong that being said you're right it does seem a little high from the percentage of the content in there but like that's the thing there generally is a split between things like game development narration and story writing you know the script um music and audio uh the different uh, 3d modeling things like that and they'll split it out a little bit more sectioned whereas this is just development which is you know one encompassing thing so i think he's just saying like hey i'm just gonna suck a bunch of money into the game and then the rest will be for just the 40 other percent is just for taxes and other random things yeah, I'm. This will be something that I'll have to. I think I might re uh, reach out to Mario from Pixel Dinos and ask him because they've uh, they've done a couple different Kickstarters for Heroes Ravage. But did they make? It I'm kind of wondering. One? I, I'm not 100 percent sure. I think they got pretty close. If not, they make it, yeah. made it. Let me see. Um, yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, but I was thinking about like. The Kickstarter tiers, how they, they promise certain things, like he promises like a plushie and a Kickstarter poster. Do they already have some sort of like production pipeline to get those things out to people? Or are they just promising it and then they're like, I guess I'll figure it out after I get my money? It depends on the group. It really depends on the person. Because like, oh, okay. at least to my understanding, Kickstarter is not going to help you with any of that. Kickstarter is there simply for like the the setup of it i might be wrong but i don't believe there's anything that would suggest that they're going to back you there's other campaign websites that are more on your side and there to help because you invest more of the profit into that system but i think kickstarter is just the fees for hosting everything and the marketing behind it Mm, gotcha. Yeah, I I have to say, Kumo, it looks interesting. Um, it looks a little bit clunky. I I like the character design of Kumo a lot. I I don't know why. I just really enjoy the the contrast between his like 
glowing eyes and like his basically faceless body because it's all just black his red cloak on kind of like the the white background and his like blue undershirt and stuff mm-hmm. i think it looks really really good um i i hope the game gets some sort of visual upgrade yeah after mm-hmm. after getting this money but once it comes out it might be something i might pick up um i played rhyme a little bit and enjoyed it enough mm-hmm. so this this might be something i'll actually look into once he gets funded do you think he'll get funded he's he's pretty close already um, he's got 23 days left yeah he's he is pretty close from this i think i think this is definitely something that will um one of the things to consider is there were a lot of these sales from um things like the early birds uh and now it looks like in the later half it has tapered down a bit um as far as the backers and the lower tiers um but we'll have to see like i said usually with these kickstarters you have in the first couple of days the first week or so is usually the hottest time and then the last week is where it starts to ramp up again um so this is definitely one of those more lull periods that we're in so at this point i think they're at a good stage because they're already over you know the hump of that 50 percent. but it really depends on how they get those uh you know that last bit and depends on what they do from a marketing strategy or if those people who have already backed it try to actually extend that reach and talk about it all right well i hope this goes well for him this can definitely shape in to be a pretty good game but now i want to talk about just fucking oh my god you and these sandwich games let's talk about simple sandwich building (laughs) this is so weird my only issue with this this game looks legitimately fun i'm so surprised that it like so simple sandwich they are going for a ten thousand dollar goal they have less than a thousand dollars with 15 days left to go which really sucks because this game looks really interesting and people are big fans of like co-op stuff right now um but the only thing that annoys me about this is so the gameplay is you hop on stuff and then it builds up your sandwich correct yes that checks out yes how does it get on top when you hop on it how does that happen that's not how like gravity works that that's not how reality works i don't understand (laughs) you know to be honest too it probably would have made more sense if you hopped on top and the item was below you since your character like it's weird because you make the sandwich so okay well let's let's take a step back essentially the game style is you're a piece of bread and then all of a sudden the table has random floating objects that would be on a sandwich, whether it be like a cheeseburger or a tomato or a pickle or cheese, Um, which I feel like this should have been called simple burger. But anyway, um, so yeah, there's definitely not a lot of luck. (laughs) Yeah. So, but then again, it could have been one of those things where there's more elements to it and more variety of sandwiches you can make because it seems like you get points based on certain sandwich types. Uh, That being said, regardless, Essentially, you're this piece of bread and you're hopping around and every time you hop on the bread, as you mentioned, it's kind of strange that the piece of food pops up above you. Um, But essentially, you're trying to jump on all of these items and make a cohesive sandwich, which is a strange sentence. Uh, (laughs) and, um, And one of the weird things is you're obviously the piece of bread that starts at the bottom in this case, since for some reason it goes above you. Um, but then when you like walk over to the plate, all of those things get taken away but it's and it makes the weirdest face ever like it's deucing well well yeah that (laughs) "Eh." but like if you think about it what they're taking away and then considering a burger with that you as the bottom piece of bread you're technically giving someone only the top half without that bottom piece because then you're still that bottom piece that runs away and starts to make a new sandwich that is a good point. I didn't actually think about that because initially I was like, oh, I don't think that they're bringing into play the fact that some people only use one piece of bread for a sandwich. But it seems like that is the only fact that they're playing into. Yeah, yeah. I was like looking at it. And I was like, doesn't it make sense that you should have to grab a piece of bread first? But I don't know. I guess those yeah. are very nitpicky things aside. I, I like. <laughs> here's the thing, though, is is. 
it's obviously a weird game and it seems very niche like this seems like a mini game you would see in a mario party <laughs> game like it doesn't seem like a full course meal you know what i'm saying huh eh? huh eh? huh eh? Anyway. Yeah, I appreciate that. Oh, that was pretty good. Thank you. Uh, I have to give you props for that one. All right. Anyway, so, uh, but it, it still looks like a lot of fun from just like the, the crazy aspect of when they were just doing it with one person. It was building the sandwich and it was like, okay, whatever. You're building a sandwich. You want to get the highest score. But then when there was a bunch of people and they're like, no, this is my burger, my, you know, pickle. Like everyone was just jumping on each other and trying to get that food and build the most elaborate sandwich. I think it could be a lot of fun. But I don't know. Once again, it really it would have to be one of those things where they'd have different modes and they'd have different sandwich types and it would have to be more of a just insane amount of things that are added to make this feel like a fully fledged game. Uh, right now, this seems more of like something you would get from a some kind of you know the mobile like a chrome browser type of game and you would just play this on like newgrounds or something back in the day not not to say that that's a bad thing i used to love games like that but it just doesn't seem like there's much more to it that i guess that's why people haven't really pushed for it um let alone paid twenty dollars for it I mean, that is kind of another thing that, you know, you have to get the game as a $20 purchase. So, I, th yeah, it's that's obviously a big factor in it. If this was a game that they were saying from a Kickstarter perspective, you could get it by paying that first tier, which is the 5 bucks, rather than just wallpaper and credits, I feel like a lot more people would have chipped in for it because if it's only five bucks it looks like it would be you know a good time of just like oh i'm gonna try this out for five bucks get a couple buddies to come over and we'll build some sandwiches yeah yeah i definitely agree the price point seems to be i i would probably say is the biggest thing holding it back is that entry level price point it does have a couple of different gameplay modes there's like the the free for all uh toast time which players must first cook the ingredients that they wish to turn in uh by staying on sizzling pans yeah okay so they cook the stuff order up and team fight so it seems like they have a couple different gameplay modes mm -hmm. but yeah this game's really interesting and it actually it has a lot of character i like it a lot but that that introductory price point is just it's a little bit too much uh twenty dollars i sadly don't think that even if this game like was 100 percent done and it was put on the store at twenty dollars i don't think anybody would buy it i will say my favorite my absolute favorite part of this kickstarter is when it goes down to say how they do the sounds for it and it's like our audio wizard and it's a guy with a microphone throwing a piece of bread on a counter <laughs> i didn't notice that that's so funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah it says only the most accurate sandwich sounds are accepted by the grand wizard <laughs> yeah this is like and i didn't even realize that thing about the additional modes which i guess i should have been more thorough but like especially when like this is a good example of how a kickstarter video is really where you're going to make or break your uh success in a kickstarter because it's that first uh that first avenue of getting someone's attention there's a lot of research that's done on how people are very quick from a marketing side to turn away from something if it doesn't at like grab their attention immediately you have a few some odd seconds or so um to really hook someone in before they move on to the next thing and i think this is a good example of really from the video's perspective and from like just a quick glance this didn't seem like there was that much in it but actually going through a lot more of it and being more meticulous with what they're offering i feel like this definitely would have been something that you know could have a lot of potential in it but once again that 20 dollar price point is pretty hefty to start with i will say they actually have their reward breakdown and only 15 percent of it goes yeah, towards stuff i was gonna bring that up but they also don't have a plush yeah. so but they have those cool maybe. jelly cheese and bread t-shirts 
Those are pretty dope. Actually. Yeah, I kind of want the bread one. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like the like full t shirt, the the blue one where it has oh, the actual yeah. sandwich and it says t shirt. But I hope it says. <laughs> I don't know if that's just them because I, I doubt that's real. Yeah, it's the same but... text everywhere next to the other items. But I think it would be really funny if it still just had that shirt and it just said t shirt with an exclamation point on it. Yeah, that would be fantastic. If every game shipped with one of those and it was $20, I'd buy it. Oh, yeah, I'd totally for sure. Buy I'd buy just that shirt for $20. Yeah, it's a great shirt. This game, I I honestly doubt it'll get funded. I mean, um, but if they come back to Kickstarter, I would definitely recommend just lowering the price point, making a little bit of a tighter video. Mm-hmm. Um but other than that, I think they did a good job. Like this, this is a good Kickstarter. It like draws your attention to a lot of really interesting places. Um, just yeah, that that price point twenty dollars, dude. That's excessive. I wonder how many people did it. Ten people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, seven people did the five dollar tier. Um, nine did their early bird backer. That also got you Someone did the like one hundred and fifty tier one. You also kind of want like I I often wonder if people do those just because they know it's not going to succeed, so they're just like, oh yeah, I'm put the. I mean put that's the risky business. <laughs> I mean it definitely is. I don't know. There's fucked up people on this earth. We talked about that for the whole first like hour of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but I mean like. I, some people just maybe really want to see that succeed or you know maybe they just wanted that uh simple sandwich sticker pack <laughs> <laughs> maybe more of the physical poster and t-shirt but still i don't know dude stickers they get you i guess i mean they got there's, there's some pretty cool stickers in there you know <laughs> I think it's about time we round down the podcast with a nice little random question. This is less of a random question. I kind of just want to know how Josh personally feels about something that I feel pretty strongly about. Um, so I should start this off with saying I, I'm i a big fan of Colin Moriarty. And I understand why some people might not be. He is like a kind of a polarizing guy. I understand people have beef with him and everything. Um, that's that's an aside. It's whatever. I think this is an issue that should be taken. Uh, I I don't know. You you would have people should be objective about this because it says something about the state of our like the games industry. Um, and. I don't know. That's that's kind of what I want to say is that even though this might have happened to somebody that you think like deserved it in quotes, kind of one, have empathy for other people. Imagine if this happened to you, just like we talked about early in the podcast. And two, kind of our, our goal as journalists is to be objective and kind of just get the news across, which is going to also be something I talk about. So Sacred Symbols is a PlayStation podcast done by Colin Moriarty and Chris Raygun or uh, Chris Maldolano, I think his, his last name is, but I more than likely said that wrong. Mm-hmm. So what happened was they initially were going to do a panel at PAX, mm-hmm. but um, after basically like setting up their panel, everything was good. PAX, uh, I have not seen like anywhere necessarily where they have given proof the PAX said this, but I, I personally do believe it. Um, because they did like accept it. They set up the panel. Everything was in place that they were going to have this panel. So supposedly PAX told them that they should tell their audience to get excited, um, to be like, to kind of get them ready to buy tickets, to come to PAX Mm -hmm. to see this panel. But then a little while later, PAX then emails Colin and tells him that the panel is actually being revoked. They are taking away the panel. They're canceling it. And they offered them, uh, they offered basically Colin and Chris like day passes to PAX to kind of like be like, oh yeah, just in case like you have travel arrangements, whatever, you, you could still come to PAX and everything. Wow. The big issue there isn't necessarily like Colin and Chris have come out and said it's not an issue that they like really wanted to go to PAX, that they like really wanted to do this panel, that they needed to do this panel. Their big issue is with the one specific thing. It's that Colin went to them and asked, 
two things. Really, he said several things. He he contacted them several times, but he really mainly had two points. One, why? Because they did not tell him why his panel was canceled. Mm-hmm. And two, can he get refunds for the Sacred Symbols fans that specifically purchased tickets to PAX to see this panel? They said that uh, they then, uh, PAX being they, uh, responded to Colin basically saying that they will refund uh, any sort of travel arrangement stuff and uh, they'll basically refund some money to Colin and Chris, but they will not refund any tickets to those who are coming to the panel. No, that sucks. Yeah, so that that is an issue, and they still didn't give a reason to why they canceled the panel, which a lot of people think it's pretty obvious that it's some sort of political differences or that people that, that like, PAX uh, buckled under the pressure that people might have been, like, giving them because Colin was coming because he's a quote-unquote controversial, like, gaming commentator mm. um, that he and Chris are. It's, it's kind of a shit show, so... Really, not many people are reporting on this, and that's one of my big issues with this, and that's where I'm talking about being objective. So, several smaller sites have reported on this, but say what you want. Like, there, there's a defense that, oh, we, we don't really cover that kind of stuff. That's bullshit. So, IGN, GameSpot, uh, now Kotaku has covered it, but... Like, these larger sites, as far as I know now, and I've looked several times, the only one that has covered it of the larger sites has been Kotaku. And Kotaku, they, in my opinion and several other people's opinions, kind of focused on weird aspects of this story. So, a lot of the article was that they kind of explained why, like, briefly explained what happened, that the the panel was cancelled. They didn't mention anything about not giving refunds or the fact that Colin himself actually uh, then decided once his like his fans would not be refunded. He said he would refund personally out of his own pocket 20 of his fans, wow. which I yeah, I thought was a big deal. I was like, that's amazing. It's just out of his pocket. He didn't have to do that. Mm-hmm. He could just kind of be like, oh, he could they be like, suck. Why would they do that? Like, yeah, he could have been like, sorry, I fought for you guys. I'm sorry. But instead, he decided to refund 20. There is the argument, like, people might be dickheads and be like, well, he refund all of them. The fact that he's refunding 20 is a generous I thing. Mean, yeah, like, he, he has nothing he, to do He doesn't do have that. to do he's it. He's just giving money yeah. out of his pocket that, like, he's just trying to be nice to, uh, like, obviously, he probably can't be in the financial situation to give just everyone money because most people aren't. Um, and, like, it it's a nice gesture gesture for those that he's, you know, trying to say like, look, I'm sorry that this happened. I, so, so I don't know much about this situation and just to kind of like give a little more context for both me and someone who may not know Colin. Um, what exactly is so controversial that would spark some of this? So it's, it's kind of, a plethora of things Mm -hmm. um so if you guys are kind of funny fans or like prior to that uh beyond fans like old school ign fans um colin and greg were on podcast beyond they made it this big deal then uh they kind of found it kind of funny well they didn't kind of they literally did found kind of funny Mm -hmm. uh with tim and nick they all created this larger company uh they kind of went along everything was fine colin made a controversial joke on national women's day which depending Mm. on the way you took it could be a joke could not be a joke uh basically what the tweet was was he said it was national women's day he said ah peace and quiet hashtag national women's day and basically like it's people have called it like a political hit like they they didn't like who he was and the fact that he was in the position that he was in so they came after him for it it's it's a whole thing after that people have not liked other things that he has said gotcha. um because that now he has like given his opinions him, on you know a very meticulous eye yeah yeah they're they're watching him they're like picking out certain things yeah, like yeah. you you can not like him like you can not like his viewpoints but people say he's like racist misogynist that Mm, he's like a bigot that he's a nazi like all of this fucked up shit and he's 
I, I don't know him personally. I listen to all his content and I have been for years. I personally don't believe that. Hmm. Um, and I think it shows that he's a genuinely caring person that he would refund these 20 people. But yeah, as, as an additional little bit, um, this Kotaku article that came out, so my big issue with it is, and this is another, like other people's issues, so it took a lot of the article explaining exactly why Colin and Chris were controversial figures, which somewhat makes sense uh, to just kind of add like background to the background to everything, um, but initially did not actually include the fact that Pax refused to give them refunds and that Colin did give his people refunds. So... It seemed to a lot of people that they were painting Colin and Chris in an overly negative light. Mm. Um, kind of like just bringing up, quote unquote, bad things they've done versus the good that they are obviously doing. Then uh, Kotaku got like a response from Colin, um, which is its whole weird thing, apparently, because like something to do with a Gmail address. I don't really understand why people had issue with that. I, I don't get that part. <laughs> um mm. Yeah, that's why I'm not really going to expand on it because I don't understand it. But then they actually added in a quote from Colin that he then spoke about the fact that they were not offering refunds and he was. But this article never really addressed that. So it kind of seemed like it was just painting Colin and Chris in an overly negative light. And people saw this as more of a hit piece than it was them actually like being objective right. and covering the story, let alone the fact that no big like gaming podcasts really have talked about it no large sites other than kotaku now have written about it as far as i know it's very possible that by the time this airs they have um <laughs> yeah. but it's it's kind of just an issue like everybody's just kind of avoiding it and they like disparate podcasts like podcast beyond recently had their 600th episode i believe yep. um they did not talk about it, nor did they really talk about Colin. Uh, they they obviously did at points in time. Brian Altano has uh, pointed out that he spoke about Colin during a story, so it's not like they didn't bring him up mm -hmm. uh, in the lineage of Podcast Beyond. But people are really having an issue that it seems like this is really being like swept under the rug, mm -hmm. which obviously there's a lot of stuff going on right now between ESA fucking doxing thousands of different um different games journalists and the horrific like mass shootings that are happening in the usa there's terrible stuff happening everywhere right but so it's it definitely makes sense that this would be somewhat like of a lower tier story but the fact that nobody really is talking about it is super annoying <laughs> it it like bothers me to like the 10th degree it's just it's excessive damn if that makes any sense. No, I get you. I mean, so I can't really add too much to this type of, you know, story or this reference that you're bringing up just because I don't know much about it. It does kind of suck um, just because it's really hard sometimes, especially when the way like the media is in this day and age of once one person screws up, that's pretty much all they get. And granted, sometimes people do certain things that are like, well, you kind of deserve it and you get basically just outed um but i mean from yeah sometimes people make jokes that unfortunately are taken the wrong way or sometimes they you know go a little bit too far um and that kind of sucks if that's really the controversy of it it's also interesting obviously that you know they're not saying anything from why the convention was canceled especially if they went you know so close to actually being like yep this is totally fine this is totally fine and then just changing their mind one day so i i'm interested to see really what that reasoning was if it was something that was more of a you know a logistical concern and there was just something that unfortunately happened that couldn't be avoided or if this was hey we don't want any negative attention from PAX, so just cut it right there. Yeah, that's that's kind of a big issue about this story or about this kind of like uh, this issue is the fact that so Kotaku is the only site who, who has reported on this. People, including myself, believe that if other sites actually reported on it it would become a bigger deal and pax would have to say something right. they would have to say one why they canceled it and possibly offer refunds because 
that's what happens. Like you, you shed light on an issue. Journalists are meant to shed light on issues. They're meant to work for people, not for personal gain. They're like, it's, I, I don't know. It's just kind of annoying because it's very possible that this could be entirely different if somebody just wrote a damn article. Like, it's <laughs> it's not that hard. And also, like, Kotaku, like, uh, the majority of the article, which I, I will say, Ethan did a good job in certain aspects where he shows kind of, like, the negativity that people were also uh, going at Colin with, mm -hmm. not just the negativity that Colin might have brought on himself, like people might think. Uh, so, like, they included a tweet where somebody said that it was fine to, like, pour milkshakes on him, which the <laughs> milkshake thing... <laughs> What the fuck is wrong with you? Like, why are you throwing and pouring milkshakes on people? And why would that be okay? Like, they're not, they're like, oh, it's not a salt. It's just a milkshake. And I'm like, if I fucking beamed you with a milkshake, I doubt you'd enjoy it. Like, I doubt you'd what a, be like, oh, yeah, I, just a milkshake. What a weird thing to get on where you're just like, yep, that's what I'm going to throw at someone, a milkshake. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> why not anything else? Like, I don't understand. Yeah. I don't really get it either. It's like people are like it's a form of peaceful protest. Like it's not. It's a milkshake. You're throwing it yeah, at somebody. Yeah, that's definitely like, not peaceful right, okay. protest. I think there's better definitions of that term. Yeah, I I don't really get it. So yeah, the the thing that really angers me with this is the fact that it's seemingly just being swept under the rug. Nobody's talking about it. Means that nothing's gonna happen. And it's kind of just this, like, I'm annoyed, not that there's, like, a possibility that nothing will happen, but that there's, like, the, it seems like everybody's being massive hypocrites about this. Mm. They're, they're willing to talk about the stories that they want, and they're willing to shed light on the stories that they want to, but when they don't want to, they're like, it's fine. <laughs> like, it's, it's cool. And I mean, that, that's... I do obviously have a slanted opinion because I am a fan of Colin, right. but I also believe that I'm being more objective than most journalists are in this, like in this specific situation, because I see both sides. I, I commend Ethan for writing an article that includes certain things that I doubt most people would, but also it was like overly negative in my opinion. So I don't know. I really just wanted to bring this up to ask you how you felt about it and to kind of talk about it, even though this podcast, nobody really fucking listens to it. And that's totally fine. Like there are people who do, um, but I just, I want people to talk about this and I figure, Hey, why not do my part? I like retweet and I like all the tweets about it. I'm kind of like engaged on Twitter about this issue, but I also figured, why not talk about it on my podcast and not be a hypocrite? Yeah, mm. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Sorry like, for rambling. Yeah, I feel so like we long. always end on these like very, very negative notes. We gotta, we gotta start doing like a weird like positivity tweet of the day or the week at the end <laughs> of our episodes, just to like clean the air. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe next week we'll do that. All right. uh, <laughs> but for now, but gloom and doom. <laughs> Yes, exactly. I feel like it's just, it's it's kind of like a staple of the podcast <laughs> to end it with gloom and doom now. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. Well, that's <laughs> so all you that's get, listeners. that's my hit for this episode. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you guys would like to follow us outside the show, you can follow me at the Hyde Legion on Twitter. You can follow the podcast at IndiePod. You can follow Josh at the underscore George 90. You can chat with us there. You can write into the show. You can do all sorts of awesome stuff. Hell, you can yell at me for being a fan of Colin Moriarty. I don't care. You can do whatever you want. You could freaking, I don't know. I, I don't know where I was going to go know. with that. I was going to send something about dick pics, oh, but well, I don't. No, let's not do that. I'd, I'd rather yeah, not have any of those. I would like <laughs> if people send us questions. I think that would be cool if they did that for the, you know, the question of the week kind of a thing. So if you guys have any ideas or anything that you, you know, want us to talk about or go on about and ramble, um, you know, just let us know. Hit us up on Twitter. That would be fantastic. I would love that. Uh, that's about it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you guys next week. Oh, by the way, I should say, make sure to check out the other podcasts in the HP Podcast Network. Check out Active Quest. Check out uh, the HP Podcast. They're fantastic. Keep an eye out. People will be tweeting about this. Uh, check out Handsome Phantom. Check out Parallax Media. Check out Active Quest. Check out Joseph Yaden, Chris Penwell, uh, all those awesome guys. Just keep an eye out. There's a bunch of smaller creators doing awesome work. Um, I'm not like saying that I am that, but, <laughs> but I'm you're definitely also saying part that of I it. am that. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely shout out to uh, Joseph. He's having what seems like a hard time right now dealing with uh, some stress. So show him some love. That is very true. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Ugh, my nose is bleeding! <laughs>